Personally, there is an area of achievement which brings great satisfaction. I've been able to reduce the number of clothes that I buy. This year, I bought just two shirts. And take a look at these trousers. They've been with me for 10 years and I still use them regularly. I still uh, you know, value them a lot. And in fact, I believe that they are good to go for the next 10 years. So today I would like to put two questions to you on the table. Why is fast fashion fast becoming a dirty word? And why should we be mindful of environment and social issues when we go out shopping? The fashion industry today is a deeply polluting industry and this comprises textiles and apparel. As conscious consumers, as responsible consumers, we have to exercise choice as an effective weapon of change. So where does this environment damage take place? The industry basically has a pre-consumer and a post-consumer phase. Uh, and when you look at the pre-consumer phase, uh, you have fiber, which is natural or man-made, that goes on to become fabric. And at this stage, you have tremendous amount of water, which is consumed, as well as uh, chemical dyes. Now, the United Nations informs us that during this phase, as much as 2.3 billion tons of greenhouse gas em are emitted. Uh, this is about 10% of the global um, greenhouse gas emissions. So the industry, the fashion industry, contributes significantly to climate change. One more data point. Uh, recent, in recent years, about 150 billion pieces of garments have been pushed out through supply chains across the world. And the fact is that this is about 60%, an increase of 60% over the numbers in 2000. The other deep concern is that 50% of all of these garments, after one year, are discarded with little accountability of where it goes. Let's come to India and what happens here. The Indian industry, the Indian fashion industry is a world leader um, and it also contributes significantly to the domestic uh, economy. Uh, you have 2% uh, of GDP coming out of the industry, 12% of total exports and the industry provides livelihood to 45 million people. However, on the environment and the social front, the industry has a poor record. In addition to all the problems that I described before, in India we have the unique situation of a large quantity of textile scrap waste, which comes out of production houses. And this is called chindi waste. Uh, now, this waste, Scrap can be actually collected, aggregated, upcycled, recycled, but you have the industry taking little accountability and little responsibility for this waste. So this waste is more or less like orphan waste. And you have um, auctions which take place. The informal sector procure this uh, materials. Um, it goes out, it gets sold, part of it to SRG Group, so upcycle it. Part of it gets recycled, uh, yarn is retrieved out of it, but there is a large quantity of blended uh, fabric waste, which is polyester as well as cotton mix. And this waste really is very difficult to recycle. And again, you know, a lot of, of it gets, disappears. And we, we know that a lot of it really would get burnt in the open, would enter into our oceans, perhaps. Uh, there's also the question of post-consumer 
garments which um, uh, uh, which brands encourage us. They encourage, they put out these big boxes uh, in stores and encourage us to bring back their uh, uh, you know our used clothes and put it into the boxes and nobody and then uh, you know buy new clothes and nobody then asks us um, or nobody really cares to know where these garments go. I can tell you where they go. A lot of them go to these hubs like in Panipat in Haryana and Hari if you go to Panipat you will see literally mountains of textile waste um, and you have uh, people mostly women working in extremely difficult situations uh, poor hygiene uh, effluent all over the place um, and uh, in that process of course some amount of retrieval takes place so how do we get out of this situation in recent years we've had a lot of attention being put on plastic waste um, and we have this problems of plastic waste now addressed through the instrument of regulation and specifically what we know of today as EPR or extended producer responsibility where brands especially the FMCG or consume, uh, uh, brands which produce a lot of consumer goods and use a lot of packaging are expected now to take responsibility <clears throat> for their consumer waste, for their post-consumer waste, uh, where they are expected to put in place a system and an infrastructure of reverse logistics to bring back the plastic waste and channel it into proper recycling. We would like now that the spotlight also be put onto textile waste. And we need EPR or extended producer responsibility to come into force also for textile waste. Our organization, Saha Zero Waste, has been working. Um, basically, we believe that all waste is a resource, all waste is a raw material. And over the years, we've been working with all kinds of material, paper, plastic, metal, glass. And now we are also working with textile waste. Uh, we have recently introduced an initiative called Circle Up. And Circle Up works with Chindi Waste, also post-consumer garments, to be able to collect it, sort it, give it to SFGs, and then get this fabric upcycled. Uh, we are looking now to partner with brands holistically. And that means brands who partner with us have to take work with us, not just to develop the products, but also to ensure that these products become part of their mainstream portfolios. Um, and only when that happens, will you have then complete responsibility of the brand towards even products made from textile, from their own textile waste. So only when we have brands and consumers investing in a whole system uh, where you have products made from, uh, you know, upcycled products made from uh, their own textile waste, will we be able to have a circular economy which comes alive? And at the center of the circular economy uh, must be reduced. Uh, followed then by reuse, repurpose, and finally recycle. As individuals, we must be mindful of our purchases and try to reduce the number of clothes that we buy and even extend the life of our garments to the extent possible because that will actually impact and reduce emissions. And there are many imaginative ways in which we can do it. And um, one of my personal, you know, what I really uh, think is a good idea is to have this kind of a clothes swap where family and friends come together and, you know, uh, each one exchanges their respective garments. And that doesn't bring about any compromise in the way we look. It will only uh, give us a more limited wardrobe at home. This is the month of October when we celebrate the birth anniversary of Gandhiji and he has given us 
so much of wisdom which is still relevant for us today. Here's one. Uh, he said that there is more to life than simply increasing its speed. I really believe that fast fashion should now fade away. And in its stead, we should have, we should be able to make choices that reflect our appreciation of the planet and all the resources that it heaps on us. <laughs>